What's up YouTube, Jeff back again. And today's a very exciting day because Samsung has dropped One UI 5.0 beta number three. There's a lot of interesting new features to talk about in this particular beta. So we're gonna get right into it. Now, let me show you guys the version for this one so you guys can see. If you're running this yourself, you can actually download it. It ends in ZV19, you can see right there. That's the last version which I downloaded today at 6.03 in the morning. Got up early to get this one. There isn't a lot of new features listed here, just a small gallery change, but they actually changed a lot of things that aren't listed here, and they also crushed a lot of bugs. So let's get into it. I got my Google Keep document because there's a lot to keep track of here, and uh, I don't want to miss any of these to tell you guys kind of what I've experienced so far. So the first one is lock screen customization, and this is going to look very familiar because it's actually something that they borrowed, quote unquote, uh, from our friends at Apple. If you've seen the new iPhone, the new iPhone has the ability to long press on your lock screen and customize your lock screen wallpapers. So you long press here. If you've got a pen or something, your fingerprint, you're going to have to put in your fingerprint. And it opens up this new lock screen customization menu where you can edit a lot of different stuff. And so also you have your, you see, see how I did the multitasking of the floating app? That remains inside there once you long press. So there's a lot of things you can do. You can edit your wallpapers. There's a new wallpaper picker menu, which we'll look at as well. You can put your contact information down here. I've got my email, which you guys can see right there. You can change your icons. So you can edit here, uh, either of these two icons if you want. You can change your left shortcut, change your right shortcut. I've got camera and Google Chat, because I use Google Chat to talk to my wife. Uh, you can change your clock, your notifications. Let's look at the wallpaper menu really quick though. Inside the wallpaper menu, there's all kinds of really cool, let me move that out of the way, really cool new features. You've got this new pane up here where you can easily get to all of your photos that are in the gallery, this carousel. You've got graphical, you've got colors. At the bottom, you've got wallpaper services like dynamic lock screen so you can change the wallpapers um, you know, throughout the day. And also downloaded wallpapers. This is a really cool feature. If you have any Galaxy theme wallpapers that you've purchased and downloaded to your Galaxy device, those will appear here as well. Now, just to show you kind of the similarities, because I do have my iPhone here, if you long press on the lock screen, this is what you get. You can kind of see that. It says customize, and then it looks like this. So let me go back to, let me go back in here. You can kind of see the comparison. I mean, obviously I've got my Google Keep shortcut there, but otherwise it looks very similar, right? Um, you can change various widgets on the lock screen here, but Samsung's actually customized them more the notifications look better, and I'll show you guys, there's a lot more robust clock uh, options. In iOS, you can see there really aren't that many options for the clock font. Well, we'll take a look in Samsung in a second. You'll see there's a whole lot more uh, customizability. And of course, you know, you've got your photos in here that you can choose, but I think Samsung has a more robust uh, sort of wallpaper choices and things like that that you can do. But this is very similar, there's no doubt about it, to what we see in iOS. And there's also these filters you can apply in iOS, which Samsung also kind of imitated, and I'll show you guys here in just a second. So if you do go into the clock styles, there's five different clock styles to pick from, and also some different fonts that you can choose up here, as you guys can see there. Um, and the colors down here, you can actually choose multiple different gradients. You can set it though it actually matches your wallpaper color scheme, and you can pick individual colors from the color wheel, so you can use the hex codes and things like that to pick a very specific color. Now, if you have GoodLock installed, I actually took GoodLock off my phone, um, well, not GoodLock, but the clock face module, because I wanted to show you guys something else with the always on display, but I'll do it in a second. We'll add it back on here. If you have the GoodLock clock face module installed, that also pops up here, and then you get countless other ways that you could customize your clock face, which actually gives you a whole lot more than you would see on iOS 16. But you can change that there. We'll come back and I'll show you that in a second. You can also change your notifications. I kind of like how they just have the icons, but if you go to details, you can change transparency and auto reverse the text color. It just makes it easier to read your notifications. I personally don't like having the full details there though, so that's kind of my choice and my preference. Uh, and then of course up here, you can kind of set this right from here and it'll apply the changes to your lock screen. Now, let me show you that change I was talking about, why I removed the clock face module from GoodLock. That is because if you have a stock clock option, like the ones that I showed you there, and I've got to wipe down my phone because I just cannot stand when I have an all black screen like my always on display and the fingerprints. I keep this around all day. So if you press the power button or double tap, look at this smooth animation that goes right into your always on display and back. This is just awesome. 
a lot of people have been saying, you know, Apple has the smoothest animations. Samsung needs to try to imitate that. And you can see that they're clearly working and listening to people's feedback because this really looks nice. I'm a really huge fan of that. So that's actually the reason I removed it because if you have the good lock clock face module, so let me actually show you. If you have the good lock clock face module, let me install it. And uh, you pick a custom clock from the good lock clock face module, then the problem is you won't be able to use the clock face module. Uh, it's kind of, now it's telling me I can't use it with the beta. Uh, all right. Well, I guess I might have just stopped myself from using it for long term. But anyway, I can tell you guys what happens. If you have a clock face module from good lock, then when you edit your lock screen, you're going to see those extra clock face module options right there. When you tap on this, it's going to appear down here and then you can go into clock face and add them. But if you choose a custom one from good lock, you don't get the smooth animations like this. You have to choose one of the pre chosen ones that I just showed you now. So that's a problem, but obviously it's a beta. So we don't expect everything to work perfectly. Anyway, that's kind of what's going on there. I showed you the smooth always on display transitions. Also, if you access the wallpaper and style menu, all of those wallpaper and style menu options that I showed you here are there. The other thing that you can actually do is when you do tap on your wallpaper like this, you do get some options it's like here, or if you tap on the one on the home screen, you get some options just like the ones you saw. Uh, you can see it's now it's crashing and wants to be buggy, but there is an option to apply filters just like on iOS. I don't know why it's not giving me the option now. But if you go in there, you do get an option to apply filters. It was able to do it earlier. That is a new feature as well uh, on One UI 5.0 Beta 3. So yeah, it's a beta. There's going to be some bugs here and there. Uh, the next thing is that I just checked is a new screenshot animation. So if you take a screenshot like this, you'll notice how this little screen pops up and it goes down there. Boop. Kind of a cool little thing. That's a very small thing. Definitely not as big as the lock screen customization, but something worth mentioning. Bixby routines have been renamed to modes and they've been placed inside the settings. So if you go up here, you've got modes. Bixby routines are now under that mode setting. So if you go here, you see your modes like sleep, driving, exercise, and relax mode. And then over here, you can add any Bixby routines. I haven't added any since I went to the beta. So my old ones uh, did not migrate over because of, of course, Bixby routines and Bixby routines plus, which I use the good lock, isn't that, that routines plus isn't officially available for uh, the good lock modules on one ui 5.0 beta but that will be there in stable of course uh fingerprint addition animation so here if we go into privacy and security so you go into the settings and then security and privacy go to biometrics and you go to add yourself a new a new fingerprint so i go to fingerprint let me draw my pattern let's add a new fingerprint there's a new animation in here it has a green circle. You see how it has a green circle around there when adding your fingerprint. So kind of cool. I mean, I don't know if I necessarily want to add this fingerprint, but since I'm already here, it's kind of slower too, a little bit to register than in the stock setup, in my opinion. But that's something I figure people would find interesting. More animations being added. Uh, there's a small revamp to the gallery. This really isn't a huge revamp, but there is a, hu a small revamp to kind of how it looks. It's kind of been revamped to keep in the style um, like stories have been changed a little bit to make them a little more immersive, a little bit bigger. Nothing huge there, but something small that I figured people would appreciate. Uh, you do have auto optimization now in the device care settings. So if you go into device care, so if we go in here, battery device care, scroll down. Auto optimization is now an actual option that's here. It's not buried in the settings. It used to be buried in the settings. I always tell people to turn this on to improve the performance of your phone whenever I make a lot of my tips and tricks videos. So I do think it's a great option. Um, you can restart overnight and it improves performance, you know, restart once a week or something like that. Uh, the next thing is the smoother animations. So the animations are better, but there is a problem with them. So I do think the animations have improved. You can see here, they're a lot more fluid in going into the app, but they still have a little stutter at the beginning. And then I have another huge problem with them, which is this. When you go from an app like Twitter and gesture back to the home screen, there's no haptic feedback, even if you have it turned on. I hope this is a bug and not something Samsung is planning to do because I love haptic feedback. Now, if you use the back gesture from the left or the right, there is haptic feedback. But if you're in the app and you swipe to go home, you get no haptic feedback from that gesture. So I do think the animations are smoother. They could still use some work and I definitely want haptic feedback. 
um, back, so to speak, for our gesture navigation. Anyway, I do like this update. I think Samsung did some cool stuff. I mean, obviously when it comes to the lock screen stuff, they kind of imitated iOS 16, but in my opinion, put their own spin on it, made it better. There's some fluid animations with the always on display, which I think a lot of people wanted to see, especially after seeing what Apple did with iOS 16. Um, and I think they could still improve on the in and out of app animations and a few other things, a couple little bugs here and there to squash. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon for future videos like this. I appreciate you guys checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.